الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated in his Mubarak hadith that the one closest to me on the day of judgment will be the one who has recited the most durood upon me in the world. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'ina wa sallam. Dear viewers of Madani channel, welcome and marhaba to this beautiful series of the blessed seerah of beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where we discuss the Mubarak lifestyle of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and glimpse of his, his life that he has spent on this earth reforming us and molding us into the mold of his blessed sunnah. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, as we discussed in the previous episode, the events that relate to the third year after Hijrah, Inshallah, in today's episode, we will uh, relate the incidents and the events in the year four after Hijrah, Inshallah. As we know that this year, the fourth year after Hijrah, much of this year was spent in fighting the Kuffar after the Muslims triumph at Badr, the Arab tribes were in awe of the Muslims army and, and, and they, they, they would not dare to launch an attack against Muslims. Allah, Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted supremacy to the Muslim army in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, on the news of the loss suffered by the Muslims at Uhud spreading, the Arab tribes regained their belief that they could wipe the Muslims and Islam off the face of the earth. The Muslims would again be forced to fight to defend themselves. Some of the famous battles that occurred in the year 4 AH are the Sariya of Sayyidina Abu Salama radiallahu ta'ala. What is the Sariya of Sayyidina Abu Salama? On the first of Muharram in the year 4 AH, a messenger brought news that the brothers Tulayha and Salama, sons of Khuwailid and leaders of Banu Asad, were inciting their tribesmen to attack on Madina Munawwara and to raid the city, city's outskirts to seize its livestock. Rasulullah sent forth a 150 strong battalion headed by Sayyidina Abu Salama radiallahu ta'ala to fight the oncoming army. The Muslim ranks included both the Ansar and Muhajirun and the likes of Sayyidina Abu Sabra ibn Abi Ruhm radiallahu ta'ala who Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah radiallahu an, Sayyidina Sa'd ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu an, and Sayyidina Usaid ibn However, when news of the approach of the Muslim army reached the Kuffar, they hastily fled and no fighting took place. Subhanallah. In the haste, the Kuffar abandoned many sheep and camels on, the, on their own, which were taken uh, by the Muslims as the spoils of war. And this incident has been mentioned in az zurqani al-Mawahib. There is also the incident of Raji'ah that took place. Ar Raji'ah is a region situated between Makkah Mukarramah and Usfan. It is here where seven noble companions of Rasulullah were martyred, and it is for this reason that the incident became known as Sariyatu Raji'ah. And the background of the incident is that some members of the tribes of Adal and uh, Al Qara came to Rasulullah and informed him of the embracing of Islam. They requested Rasulullah to send some of his companions to teach them the laws of Islam, to teach them how to recite the Quran and to enlighten them in matters of deen. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam accepted their request and sent 10 of his notable companions under the command of Sayyidina Asim ibn Thabit radiyallahu an to undertake uh, this Allah Akbar. Along the way, the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam camped at a well belonging to the tribe of Hudayl at Ar-Raji. Their host betrayed them and they were ambushed by a group of 200 kuffar from the tribe of Banu Lihyan. The companions climbed a hillock to save themselves, to safeguard themselves. The kuffar began to fire arrows and the Muslims responded by hurling stones back at them. The kuffar realized that they would not be able to kill the Muslims in this way. So in an attempt to deceive them, they called out, O Muslims, come down from the hill. It is uh, not our intention to kill you, but to sell you as captives to the people of Makkah. Lay down your swords and uh, we promise that we shall not kill you. Dear viewers, Sayyidina Asim ibn Sabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu replied, As for me, I will never come down on the promised security of a disbeliever. And he made dua, O Allah, inform your messenger sallallahu alayhi wa of our plight. Allahu Akbar. This was the unwavering trust in Allah and his beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Filled with the spirit of uh, battle, Sayyidina Asim ibn Thabit radiallahu ta'ala and six other companions, they descended from the hill and fearlessly fought the kuffar until they were martyred. Sayyidina Asim ibn Thabit radiallahu ta'ala who killed many notables of the kuffar of Quraysh on the day of Badr. When news of his martyrdom reached Makkah, the disbelievers immediately dispatched a group to Arraji to bring back a body part to confirm that he had in fact been killed. However, when they reached Ar-Raji, the group witnessed a miracle of Sayyidina Asim ibn Sabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu. They found that thousands of bees surrounded his Mubarak body, preventing any attempt at reaching his body. Unable to breach the swarm, they were forced to retreat and return to Makkah empty-handed. This has been mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari and in Az-Zurqani al-Mawahib as well. The three remaining companions, Sayyidina Khubayb ibn Adi, Sayyidina Zaid, and Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Tariq radiallahu anhu majma'een, took the word of the kuffar and came down from uh, the hill. However, the disbelievers broke their promise and began tying them up. Seeing this, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Tariq radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, this is only the first of your deceptions and it is better that I am martyred like my companions. He too attained martyrdom whilst fighting the kuffar. Allahu Akbar. By now the kuffar had also tied up Sayyidina Khubayb and Sayyidina Zaid radiallahu ta'ala anhuma who were therefore unable to carry on fighting the kuffar of Banu Lihyan who took them as captives and sold them in Makkah Mukarrama. At the Battle of Uhud, Sayyidina Khubayb radiallahu ta'ala anhu had killed Harith ibn Amir at Uhud and thus was brought by his sons. They martyred Sayyidina Khubayb radiallahu an to avenge their father's death. Sayyidina Zayn radiallahu ta'ala an was brought by Safwan ibn Umayyah with the, with the intention of killing him to avenge the death of his father Umayyah ibn Khalaf. Sayyidina Khubayb radiallahu ta'ala anhu was kept as a prisoner for a number of days before being taken to at tanim which is situated just outside the boundary of the Haram. Sayyidina Khubayb radiallahu ta'ala anhu asked the disbelievers to grant him permission to perform two units of salah which he was granted. After completing his salah, he calmly said, O Kufar, my heart is desired to prolong this prayer as it is my last, Allahu Akbar, except that I rather you did not think that I had taken a long time out of fear of death. Thereafter, 
when the kuffar had lifted Sayyidina Khubayb radiallahu ta'ala anhu to the cross and tied him to the cross. He radiallahu ta'ala anhu recited this beautiful poetry that when I am being killed as a Muslim, what care do I have for the way I receive my death? The sacrifice of my life is for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. If He wills, He will bless my limbs, Allah Akbar. This, these were the words of Sayyidina Khubayb radiallahu ta'ala anhu ponder upon the glory of Allah Azza wa Jal that although Abu Sirwa, the son of Al Haris ibn Amir, martyred Sayyidina Khubayb radiallahu ta'ala anhu, both Abu Sirawa and his two brothers, Uqba and Hujair, would later embrace Islam and be honored with the excellence, excellence of being the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was informed of the martyrdom of Sayyidina Khubayb radiallahu ta'ala anhu by revelation and he and his companions were deeply saddened by his dreadful news of his death, Allah Akbar. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the companions, whoever amongst you brings back the body of Sayyidina Khubayb radiallahu ta'ala anhu from the cross shall be admitted into Jannah, Allahu Akbar. Hearing this glad tiding, Sayyidina Zubair ibn al-Awwam and Sayyidina Miqdad ibn al-Aswad radiallahu ta'ala anhuma traveled night and day to reach at Tan'im. Forty kuffar had been appointed to guard the body of Sayyidina Khubayb radiallahu ta'ala anhu and miraculously while they were all asleep Sayyidina Zubair ibn al-Awwam and Sayyidina Miqdad ibn al-Aswad were able to take the body down from the cross. Even after 40 days the body of Sayyidina Khubayb radiallahu ta'ala anhu showed no sign of decay at all and bled as though the wounds were still fresh. They placed the blessed body on a horse and rode back to Medina Munawwara. In the morning, 70 soldiers rode on fast horses in pursuit of Sayyidina Zubair ibn al-Awwam and Sayyidina Miqdad ibn al-Aswad radiallahu anhu, managing to catch up with them. On seeing that they would be captured, Sayyidina Zubair and Sayyidina Miqdad radiallahu anhu, took the body of Sayyidina Khubayb radiallahu ta'ala off the horse and placed it on the ground. Allahu Akbar. The ground immediately split open, took in the body and closed up again. Leaving no trace of its opening, it is for this incident that Sayyidina Khubayb radiallahu ta'ala was given the title of Baliyul Ard, meaning the one whom the earth swallowed. Allahu Akbar. The two companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa then said to the kuffar, we are lions returning home. If you have the courage, then try to block our path and see what happens next. Otherwise, take to your way. The kuffar saw that the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa were not in possession of the body, so they decided to return to Makkah without further confrontation. The two companions of Rasulullah sallallahu returned to Madinah Munawwara and informed Rasulullah sallallahu of what had happened. Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam was also present in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam at the time and said, Ya Rasulullah, even the angels are proud of the feet of your two companions radiallahu anhuma subhanallah. Dear viewers, it is in this year that the martyrdom, martyrdom of Sayyidina Zaid radiallahu ta'ala anhu also took place as he was part of this group. And uh, let's listen to some other incidents that uh, did occur in this year, such as the expedition of Biri Mauna. In the month of Safar, the famous incident of Biri Mauna took place, and Abu Bara Amir ibn Malik, who was uh, nicknamed the spearhead handler, meaning because of his bravery he was named as such. He came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He invited Abu Bara to Islam. Abu Bara neither accepted the invitation nor did he show any enmity toward Islam. In fact, 
he asked Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to send some uh, companions to the people of Najd to preach them Islam. Perhaps he said they may respond favorably and enter Islam. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam feared that any companions he sallallahu alaihi wasallam would send to Najd may face the same treachery that Sayyidina Khubayb radiyallahu ta'ala and his companions faced at the hands of Hudayl tribe. However, Abu Bara assured Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam of their safety and extended his personal protection by undertaking to uh, protect their lives and property. With this consideration, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent a group of 70 companions who were exceptional reciters of the Holy Quran, so were known as the Qurra. Along the way, the companions stopped at Bir Ma'una at the border between the lands of Banu Amir and Banu Sulaim. Sayyidina Haram ibn Milhan took the letter of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to Amir ibn Tufail al-Amiri who was the leader of the tribe and also the nephew of Abu Bara. Without even bothering to read the letter, Amir ibn Tufail gestured to someone to kill Sayyidina Haram radiallahu an. The companion was struck with a spear from behind and attained martyrdom. Dear viewers, this was the treachery. Not satisfied by spilling the blood of the innocent Sayyidina Haram radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Amir ibn Tufail then gathered an army from the tribes who were stationed at the well of Mauna, waiting for Sayyidina Haram radiallahu ta'ala to return. After a lengthy wait, fearing something may have happened to Sayyidina Haram radiallahu and the companions continued their journey towards Najd and found themselves face to face with Amir ibn Tufail's army. The companions drew their sword and said to the people who had now surrounded them, we swear by Allah that we have nothing to do with you. We are on our way to fulfill the duty given to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. However, the bloodthirsty polytheists had already decided that they were going to kill them one by one. Every companion except Sayyidina Amir ibn Umayyah al-Damri radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Allahu Akbar. This was the martyrdom of so many reciters of the Holy Quran and so many noble companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Amir ibn Tufail narrated that when martyred, the body of Sayyidina Amir radiallahu an rose to the sky before descending back to earth. After which, despite searching for his body, it could not be found as the angels had laid him to rest. Allahu Akbar. Explaining to Sayyidina Amir ibn Umayyah, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, why he had spared Amir ibn Tufail said, my mother had vowed to free a slave and for this sole reason I free you now. He then cut a lock of his hair and let him go. Dear viewers, on his way back to al Madina, Sayyidina Amr ibn Umayyah reached al Qarqara, where he sought to rest under a tree where two kuffar of Banu Kilab were also resting. When they fell asleep, Sayyidina Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhu slew both to avenge the killing of the companions, not knowing that these kuffar had been granted protection by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Upon reaching Madinah Munawwara, Sayyidina Amr informed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the martyrdom of the companions and what had occurred. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became greatly aggravated by this. Never had any previous incident caused Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much grief as this did. For an entire month, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam supplicated against the tribe of the Quran, Allahu Akbar. And, and Usayya and Banu Lihyan in the time of Fajr Salah. Regarding the two kuffar killed by Sayyidina Amr ibn Umayyah radiallahu an, 
the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam instructed the blood money to be paid in compensation for their deaths. Dear viewers, there was another battle that took place in the same year by the name of Ghazwa Banu Nadir. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam met the Jews of Banu Nadir to discuss the killing of the two men by Sayyidina Amr ibn Umayyah radiallahu anh. So he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had already announced the blood money would be paid due to the agreement the Muslims had with them. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was accompanied by Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar and Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhum. However, the Jews deeply loathed the final messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam notwithstanding the treaties in place. As the Jews were Ahlul Kitab, people of the book, Rasulullah sallallahu treated them with courtesy. However, they remained staunch enemies of Islam and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This was manifest by the hatred and resentment they harbored against the Muslims and their perpetual conspiring with the kuffar and 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 the hypocrites against Islam. Dear viewers, even on this occasion, although they apparently welcomed him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with respect and pretended to accept his demand, they had already planned a sinister scheme against Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were planning and plotting all the time against our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Deen of Islam. The Jews requested Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions to sit in the shade of a building. In the meantime, they secretly discussed uh, throwing a large boulder upon Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions from the roof to kill them. Amr ibn Jahash ibn Kaab climbed on the roof to carry out this plot. However, Allah azza wa jalla, the true protector of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, immediately informed the beloved Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam of the sinister plan of the Jews by revelation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa immediately stood up and without saying a word left to return to Madinah Munawwara. Upon reaching Madinah Munawwara, he informed the companions of the plot of the Jews. After consulting the Ansar and Muhajirun, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sent the following announcement to the Jews that by plotting and attempting to the treaty, you are given 10 days to leave Madinah Munawwara, after which time whomsoever of you is still found to be in the city will be killed. Upon hearing this command of the king of Madinah Munawwara, Sayyidina Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Jews immediately began to make preparation to leave the city. In the meantime, Abdullah ibn Ubay, the leader of hypocrites, attempted to come to their aid and declared, at any cost do not leave the city. I am prepared to aid your cause with 2,000 men, as are the Jews of the tribes of Banu Quraiza and Banu Ghatfan as well. This gave Banu Nadir much encouragement who then will not leave and, and they would refuse to comply with the orders and shall, shall not leave Madina Munawwara. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was informed of their reply, he appointed Sayyidina ibn Umm Maktoum radiallahu anh as the Imam of the Masjid al-Nabawi Sharif and immediately proceeded with an army to besiege the fort of Banu Nadir. The siege would last for about 15 days during which no goods or provisions were allowed to enter the fort. The Jews were entirely helpless and there was to be no sign at all of, the, of either Abdullah ibn Ubay or Banu Quraiza. Allahu Akbar. This is how they got repaid against conspiring behind the back with the Muslims and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Just as Satan leers a person to disbelief, to kufr, and then slinks away 
so too did the hypocrites promise safety to the Jews against the Messenger of Allah but then they abandoned and betrayed them when the time had come. As well as besieging this fort, Rasulullah had also instructed for the date trees nearby to be cut down and burnt as it was possible for the Jews of Banu Nadir to hide in them and attack the Muslims. Regarding the cutting down of the trees, there were two options, there were two opinions amongst the ranks of the Muslims. One group were of the opinion that uh, they should not be cut down as they would form part of the spoils of war which would be then be distributed amongst them. The other group were of the opinion of that cutting down the, the, the trees would destroy the enemies means of amb ambush as a result of losing this advantage would become enraged. With this objective in mind, it was better that the trees be brought down. Allahu Akbar. This was the, the second opinion that they received. Eventually, the Banu Nadir could no longer tolerate the siege and offered to leave Madina Munawar on the condition that they were given safe passage with their camels fully laden with as much of their belongings as possible. Rasulullah he accepted this condition and thus the Jews of Banu Nadir with 600 camels fully laden with their wealth and belongings left Madina Munawwara singing as they did so. Some of them would settle in Khaybar while others would travel to Asham to settle. They left behind large amounts of spoils of war including a large swatches of land, 50 metal hats, 50 suits of armor and 340 swords which were acquired by Rasulullah to be used by the Muslim army. This is how this uh, siege of um, the fort of Banu Nadir had ended peacefully and there were other noteworthy events dear viewers that did occur in this in this fourth year after Hijrah. One of them was that the Ansar requested Rasulullah to distribute all of the, the spoils of war from Ghazwa Banu Nadir and, and, and give it to the Muhajirun, saying that, Ya Rasulullah, we do not desire any of the spoils of war. It should be given to our Muhajirun brothers, subhanAllah. Can you imagine such was their generosity and their love and affection towards the Muhajirun, their, their brothers, Allahu Akbar. This was the bond that was created by Rasulullah between Ansar and Muhajirun. He became very pleased upon hearing this and made this dua that, Oh Allah, have mercy on Ansar, their children, and the children of their children, Allahu Akbar. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Sayyidina Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala the son of Sayyidina Usman ibn Affan passed away two days after a rooster pecked him in the eye and this happened in the same year and other incidents that occurred in this year was the wife of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Ummul Mu'mineen Sayyida Zainab bint Khuzayma radiallahu ta'ala anha passed away in this year. Also Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa married Sayyida Ummul Mu'mineen Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha in this same year. Sayyida Fatima binti Asad radiallahu ta'ala anha, the mother of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anha, who passed away in this same year. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa gave his blessed clothes as a shroud for her and entered the grave himself to lay her down on her final resting place with his blessed hands. Allahu Akbar. And Rasulullah then said, None but Fatima binti Asad shall be saved from the constriction of the grave. Such beautiful dua Rasulullah made for her salvation. And Sayyidina Abdul Aziz ibn Umar anhu reports that only five individuals were fortunate enough to have Rasulullah entered their graves and lay them inside to rest. 
and those fortunate individuals were none other than uh, Sayyida Khadija Ummul Mu'mineen radiallahu ta'ala anha and number second the son of Sayyida Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha from her previous marriage and number third was Sayyida, Sayyidina Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu number fourth was Sayyidin, Sayyida Umm Ruman radiallahu ta'ala anha the mother of Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha and number five was Sayyida Fatima binti Asad radiallahu ta'ala anha, the mother of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anha. It has been mentioned in Madarajun Nabuwa. The next noteworthy event that took place in this year was the birth of Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was born in the fourth year AH on the fourth of Shaban. The other incident that took place that some historians are of the opinion that alcohol was declared as unlaw unlawful, meaning haram, in this year, in the fourth year AH, whilst others have stated this, uh, this to be uh, uh, declared haram and forbidden in the sixth year AH or in the eighth year AH. Allah knows best. Now, these were some of the noteworthy events that took place in the fourth year after Hijrah, dear viewers. Inshallah, stay tuned to learn more about the blessed seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there is much more to come inshallah and may inshallah it be a means for our inspiration and and a better our lives and inshallah give us the strength and courage to follow the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with this mission in mind of your fragrant movement of quran and sunnah that i must strive to reform myself and the people of the entire world sallu al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وسلم